Hello again, I'm Luno and today we're building a PC for my sister-in-law who is an architect slash engineer. So basically we're building a gaming PC. We'll be looking at why I picked these parts for the build and show you how I built it. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the budget for the build is at 2500 Australian dollars. And since they wanted a smaller sized PC, I decided to go with the Micro ATX build. So the motherboard for the build is the B760M, the DDR5 version from Asus. This is just a solid board which supports 12th to 14th gen Intel processors with Wi-Fi 6 and has plenty of headroom for future upgrades. Moving on to the CPU, I got the i5-14600KF with 14 cores and 20 threads. Similar to a lot of games, softwares like AutoCAD and Lumion mainly utilize a single core. And the 14600KF has better single core performance than even the 12th gen i9s. So it's just the perfect CPU under the budget. I actually wanted to go with 13600 to save money for the GPU, but it was out of stock. And these are the Corsair Vengeance DDR5 RAMs. They are 32 gigs at 5200 MHz of speed, which should be more than enough. I've been using Corsair RAMs over the years and they've always performed well. And this is a perfect fit for the all black build. Speaking of all black, I've opted for the AK400 Zero Dark for the CPU cooler. I've used this one in one of my previous builds and they kept my CPU cool just as any other cooler would. Plus, Bhutan's a fairly cool place, so this should be more than enough. The reason I went with an air cooler is because it's super easy to swap them out, as opposed to an AIO, we have to unscrew the whole radiator and the fans. So it'll be easier for them should they want to upgrade in the future. As for the storage, I've opted for Samsung's 970 EVO Plus. They're tried and tested, and they're cheaper than the current versions. NVMe SSDs are the current standards due to the huge improvement in throughput and latency. Now let's look at the Deepcool CH370 Micro ATX case. It has a sleek minimalistic design and has a secret headphone stand as well. It has plenty of room inside for large GPUs, and the customizable front panel design is just a plus. I installed the Deepcool FK120 to suit the all black design. These are 120mm PWM fans that go up to 850 RPM. As for the power supply, I wanted an 80 plus gold efficiency rated with 750 watts of power so I chose Corsair's RM750E. They're also full modular, which makes things easier for everyone. When building a PC in general, it's best to connect all the cables before installing the GPU, just to make things easier for yourself. Now for the main event, the graphics card. I chose Nvidia's 4070 Ti from MSI, which is more than capable of handling complex 3D projects in Lumion 3D. With 12GB of VRAM and 7680 CUDA cores, this GPU can handle any AAA games out there. One of the best things about this is that it's super power efficient, which makes them relatively easier to cool. In terms of comparison, NVIDIA considers them to be faster than the previous gen 3090 Ti. Now after wrapping up the cable management, I realized the build was too dark since I didn't use any RGB fans. So I decided to add two LED strips that won't look too much but will give enough lighting for better aesthetics. Since everything's working, all we have to do is make a bootable copy of Windows and install it in our new PC. 
Make sure you set your RAM frequency to its max capabilities as it is usually capped way below by default. Since all the fans installed are PWM, you can also manage the fan curves in BIOS. Now let's pack up the PC and ship it to Bhutan. If you want to see the full packaging video, click the link on the top right corner. And after more than 20 hours of flight, the PC finally reached Bhutan without a single scratch. I might upload the benchmark infos next time, but for now, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. And FYI, I don't condone this at all.